Hello everyone, and welcome back to this episode of the Mantaflow tutorial series. Now today we are going to be looking at the nodes that you can use for smoke shading, and how I like to use them to get some really, really cool stuff. So let's hop into Blender and open up that node editor. You'll need a good simulation to start with. I'm going to use the Ring of Smoke from the last video in this series, but regenerate it with flames so that we can utilize those as well. Now the most basic way to shade a smoke simulation is to simply plug a volume note shader into the volume output. There are three volume nodes you can do this with, volume absorption, volume scatter, and the principled volume. I find principled volume to be the easiest one to understand and use given that it is a combination of absorption and scatter, so we will mainly be focusing on that one in this tutorial. Let's start with a simple rundown of what this node can do. The color is where you plug in nodes to color your smoke, of course. The color attribute used is just below that, where you could put in an attribute such as the heat, temperature, or just the color. I don't use this very often though, opting to just use nodes into the first slot instead. The density value controls the thickness of the smoke, of course, and again we have an attribute to put into there, but unlike the color, it's actually pretty essential to stick something in here. Usually the density attribute, but other ones can be used to restrict the areas of the simulation that can be filled. Anisotropy controls how the light affects the volume. You can see that as I change this, the direction from which the light is applied seems to shift. The absorption color changes the inner color or tint of the smoke. I don't change this too often as I usually carry out color stuff with just the color node at the top. And now we get to the fun stuff. Emission strength controls what parts of the smoke will glow, and the emission color will control the color of those glowy bits. We can't define an attribute for the emission, so make sure to have something from the volume info node plugged in here. Otherwise, you'll get these weird blocky effects. And these last four things are used for physically accurate fire rendering. The black body intensity is used for the intensity of fire effects which is generated using the temperature attribute for the most part. I prefer to just plug the temperature into this from the volume info node and change the brightness with the temperature slider, but you can do it by sliding the black body intensity back and forth as well. Black body tint gives a color to the black body other than the default fiery color. This can look pretty awesome, but of course will remove a good amount of the realism. The temperature is where you define how hot you want your flames to be. This is defined in Kelvin units, so a value of 1000 looks pretty orange, and a value of 10,000 looks like a superhero sky beam. And of course this last field is where the black body fire rendering is drawing its data from. Usually you'll just want to leave this as the temperature attribute, but the other ones do work too. Be careful changing between attributes quickly, as I've found that that will result in Blender crashing most of the time. So that is what all the stuff in the principled volume node does. You would typically go about using this by starting with a volume info node, where you get all the attributes for your smoke simulation. You would then run the outputs there through some other nodes, and then plug it into the principled volume node to get your desired result. The nodes I use the most for this kind of stuff are probably the math node and the color ramp node, other than the two basic ones to get our data. I would get acquainted with these as they are very important. The color ramp is easily used to increase contrast in areas of the simulation, or flip which areas are affected. You can see here that I have split my density attribute into two different color ramps. One outputs a very dense smoke center while leaving the outer ring blank. The other outputs a thin layer around that center ring I created with the first color ramp. I could add these two back together with the math node set to the add function, and that way we would have a very dense center with a thin outer layer, changing the way the smoke looks very quickly without actually rebaking a simulation trying to get more smoke in the center. I can also use one of these outputs as a factor on something like a mix RGB node, and we can get color data associated with our different densities as well. It's a really good way to change the simulation without spending a ton of time rebaking things. Other functions on the math node can be used for this kind of stuff as well, and I'd highly encourage playing around with them and looking at its page in the Blender manual to figure out more about what these different functions do and how they can help you. However, for the most part, I use the multiply and add functions. 
The add function can easily add different node tracks back together to feed into the base principled volume node. And the multiply function can easily change the density of your smoke. I get by pretty well with both of those and a color amp. Color amps can be extremely useful for coloring your smoke as well, rather than just changing the density. You can do things like feed an attribute in, add multiple sliders to the ramp, change the colors, and move things around for some really, really cool color results. As for things like flames, those black body options really work well without a lot of tweaking. If you render in cycles, emissive smoke and flames will also scatter light around your scene, which really helps to make it look better. Simply plugging the temperature attribute into the black body intensity and changing the temperature slider should be enough to give you physically accurate results a good portion of the time. For unrealistic fire and smoke, I usually just use emission strength with a different attribute such as tweaked density or some flames plugged into there. Now, for some final words on this subject of smoke shading, just don't make anything too dense and make sure to use reference for whatever you're trying to make. Smoke starts to look really messed up when you go too high with the density, so try to stay on the low end for that. And I found that collecting some reference images for your coloring and the density of your smoke and explosions is really useful, especially if you're going for realism, so I'd highly recommend collecting some reference for that. And just like that, we've made it to the end of another tutorial. Go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you feel like helping me out, and share this with anyone who needs to know more about smoke simulations. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.